Today we're going to talk about multimeters, digital multimeters used to measure different characteristics of electrical components, electronics components, and the way that electricity flows in circuits. I've got two here, and each of them are slightly different. What they have in common is that there is a dial for a selector range, depending on whether you want to measure DC volts, AC volts, if you want to measure DC current, if you want to measure resistance. And this has the feature of being able to measure um, a 1.5 volt battery, like an AA or AAA, a 9 volt battery, and measure temperature in Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, and continuity test and give you a tone, an audible tone to let you know if there's continuity. There are three places to plug in the probes. The center one is the common for the black wire. And if you're going to measure current up to 10 amps, that would plug the red probe into the one on the left. If you're going to measure anything else, you plug the red probe into the current on the right. In this multimeter, there's an on-off switch where the other dial had off as one of the positions. And again, you can measure a different range of resistances. You can measure, measure a different range of voltages in DC, AC. You can measure current in a variety of ranges here and perform a continuity test. Additionally, this offers the option of being able to test a transistor as well by plugging the three prongs of a transistor in for the collector, base, and emitter, depending on if it's NPN or PNP. And again, you've got three places to plug in your probe wires. You can plug in a common black here, and then depending on whether you're going to measure volts, ohms, or milliamps, you can plug into the middle one with your red wire, or if you're going to measure uh, up to 10 amps DC, you can plug your red probe instead into this section. So let's talk about the concept of continuity. The meter is able to measure for continuity. In this case, it's the lowest setting in the resistance category. Continuity simply means that the electrons are able to travel unimpeded or unrestricted. You can think of it like electrons traveling through a piece of plain wire. I've set my meter prior to doing any testing to the desired range, which is for continuity, and you'll be able to see the resistance reading go down to zero on this because it's just a piece of plain wire, and you'll hear an audible tone. This is telling me I have continuity. Many times when a circuit doesn't work properly, the fault is an open circuit. There's a disconnect someplace in the circuit preventing it from functioning like it's supposed to. Being able to perform a continuity test is an important diagnostic function to be able to rule out and reduce your list of possibilities for why something doesn't work. And this is all a continuity test is. You hook a probe up to each end of the wire and make sure that you have zero ohms resistance. If it were to read a 1 on the left side like so, that would tell you clearly, and visually you can see it, there is not a connection. And this can happen inside the wire insulation into the bare eye, you wouldn't be able to tell it, but by performing a continuity test, you could hook that up and still see infinity, or one is what that means on the left side, and not hear a tone, even with that clip lead connected. And that would tell you that there was a break in that wire. That would help you narrow down why the circuit didn't work. Let's talk about what a short circuit is. Oftentimes, when people refer to a circuit that doesn't work correctly, they will say it's shorted out, or it's got a short circuit. Usually, the case is not that it's a short circuit, but that there's a break in the wire someplace, and you have an open circuit much like what we discussed with the continuity test. In reality, a short circuit would be if we took a wire from the plus terminal and hooked it directly to the minus terminal or ground connection on the power supply or the battery. I'm not going to do that because that's not good for the battery. It's harmful for the battery, and over a prolonged period of time, it will build up heat and it will fail. You might see it bulge on the backside. Uh, perhaps some of the chemical chemistry inside the battery might ooze out. And that's not safe. It's not good for the battery. On a power supply that's plugged into a 110 or 220 um, power supply from the main electrical wiring in the structure, that can be very damaging and very harmful. Usually such power supplies have got short circuit protection or a fuse 
If you blow the fuse, then the, fun the device does not function until you put a new fuse in. If, it ha if there's a circuit breaker that's involved, it may kick out the circuit breaker on the main panel as well. And these are safety devices to prevent the damage that happens when all the electrons rush from one terminal through this piece of wire directly to the other terminal without doing any work. So that's what a short circuit is. A short circuit is when the rest of the circuitry gets bypassed or you've got some sort of a direct line path between the positive and ground connections on a power supply where the electrons aren't actually doing any work. They're just rushing one, from one terminal to the next.